Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at exporting documents for print in Adobe InDesign. So I've got my artwork on screen, it's finished, signed off, and I'm ready to export this as a PDF to send to a printer. The first step is to go to File and down to Export. And I can specify a file name, select a location, and from the format at the bottom, select Adobe PDF Print. Click save, and we're then presented with an export Adobe PDF dialog box. Now from the top, you can specify an Adobe PDF preset. So let's go ahead and pick high quality print. Now we're not going to go through all of the options. Some of them are self-explanatory, but for this tutorial, we're going to focus on the ones that are essential when exporting. So pages, you can export all of the pages, or you can export a particular range. So you could do one to three, or four to eight, but we're going to leave this set as all. Now next you can export a single pages or spreads. If you export a single pages, each page within your document will export as a single page. If you select spreads, however, imagine a magazine. You have the front cover and then you have page two and three as a spread. Page four and five is a spread and page six and seven is a spread. You get the idea. So exporting as spreads will have your first page as a single page in the PDF and then page two and three will appear alongside each other in the PDF. It's as if you were actually looking at a magazine in real life. So you can choose pages or spreads and you've got a few other options here. Compression, usually I just set this to maximum. 300 pixels per inch or DPI, so everything's all good there. We're going to get a nice high quality print. Marks and bleeds, you can turn all of these on, all the printer marks, because they shouldn't appear in your final product. But we'll go through them anyway. So crop marks, these are pretty essential. So the crop marks will line up with the trim size of your document. So the artwork that I showed you at the start of this tutorial is set at A4 size. So the crop marks would line up to show the printer that this needs to be cut at A4 size. So that's pretty essential. Bleed marks. If you've got bleed added to your document, then you'll need to add this option as well because it will mark this for the printer so they can see where the bleed line is. Registration marks and color bars, these are some things that you just can include. They're useful for printers. Registration marks and color bars just help the printer line up the document and ensure that the color is correct before printing. Page information, this just includes a little bit of information, page number, file name, and all that stuff. So you can include this if you like. It doesn't appear within your print, so it's perfectly safe to do so. And then you can tick this box here. So if you already have bleed specified in your document, so if you, when you first set up your document, you entered, let's say five millimeters of bleed, you can tick this box and it will just pull that from the document. Alternatively, you can specify a different amount of bleed if you like. And next let's go to output. We've got color conversion. So depending on the assets that are in your image, if you've imported some images that are RGB, for example, and you haven't converted them to CMYK, you can do a conversion in this export panel. I'd recommend using CMYK images for print, but nevertheless, you can do this. So if you select from the color conversion, either convert to destination or convert to destination and preserve numbers respectively, you can choose your print profile. So you may need a different one here depending on where you are in the world. If you're in the EU, typically coated Fogra 27 or 39 is the print standard. Or if you're in America, for example, you might use US sheet fed coated. It depends entirely where you are. So lots of different options there. If you are unsure, just ask your printer. And then you can include that destination profile. So you can include that. This is the destination that you specified here. So you can choose whether to include that profile or not. Ink manager. This just shows all of the four inks that are going to make up your print and the density and the type and the sequence. Nothing usually to worry about here. I just leave that set at OK and that's all fine. Advanced. A few other little options here. Some of these are self-explanatory. 
security you can specify this as well so you can add a password that is required to even open the document or you can add a password to restrict printing editing and other tasks so if I've added a password to this document now, I can specify what type of printing is allowed, whether it's none, low resolution or high resolution, whether there can be any changes to the document, or enable copying of text and other content, and whether I would like to enable text access of screen reader devices. So lots of other settings here, and you can securely lock that with a password. And now I need to type that password, and of course I've forgotten it. So let's take that off. And then a summary is just a general summary of all your settings and you can save that summary if you like. You can also save your preset if you're going to be using it again from the bottom left corner and then when you're ready to go just click export and it will export your PDF to the location with the name that you've specified. And there we go that's how to export a document for print in Adobe InDesign. As always guys please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.